Proper naming is a key ingredient for clean code. Finding good names for types, APs and variables isn't an easy task though, but sometimes it is. In this video I give you four simple tips improving the readability of your code instantly. Tip number one, use proper plural form instead of list suffix. Look at this example. I see this still so often in code and I always wonder, would the developer use that style of English when talking to a peer? Hey dude, can you please review this code file list? Of course no one would do this. So let's just rename that to folders. It's much more intuitive, isn't it? Let's look at the second example. Here, list is probably used to differentiate the variable which comes as an argument and the variable used locally. In this case, we can fix the code by just omitting the variable completely. So let's make that code simple. We just remove the variable. We just put the condition here. So in case the input's not null, we return the splitted process IDs. Otherwise, we return an empty list. And we can even make that shorter. And we are done, no list. This can also be applied to dictionaries and other containers. In this case, it looks like we have a repository here and the internal member can be simply called my tools or maybe my name tools. In case this is about performance, a better name could also be my tool index or my tools cache. Or in case this is some named based lookup, we can call it my ID to tool mapping. The second tip is to simply skip worthless suffixes. What do I mean by that? In this case, we have an interface which obviously provides some configuration information, but someone added this worthless access. Just omit this and the purpose of the interface becomes more clear immediately. In this case, we look at a data structure called test case info. So it seems to be about a test case. The info in this case is really not relevant. If we just remove it, the name becomes more natural. If we want to say that this is a more specific test case, we can also name it like that. Maybe it's a planned test case or an executed test case. Much better naming, isn't it? Let's look at this example. This data structure carries some information about a patient, but someone added this useless data suffix. If we just remove it, isn't that more natural? And if we want to, again, name it more specifically, we could name it like analyzed patient or case. Tip number three, use suffixes other developers can relate to. These are, for example, suffixes which refer to patterns. Looking at this interface, this seems to be a factory. It just has a bunch of create APIs. So let's name it like that, foo factory, and the purpose becomes more clear. This interface has add, remove, and find APIs. So it seems to be a repository. Let's name it like that. And this interface seems to be a reader, right? So let's name it ifoo reader and make the intent very clear. There are many patterns which have unique names. Get familiar with those names and use them in your code to make the intent pretty clear. And the last tip is, you might have already guessed it, never name anything helper or utility. That's equally bad. From my experience, there are only two reasons why helpers exist. Number one is someone was simply too lazy to think about a better name to express the responsibility of a class. The solution here, of course, is take the time and find a proper name. This XML helper here, if we look closer at the API, obviously encapsulates some XML file. Let's name it like that. XML file could be a name, but also XML document could be even a better name. This class is called data helper, but actually it looks like an equality comparer. So let's fix the design. We implement i equality comparer of string, generate the interface, just change the API. And we just have to add here the implementation for get hash code as well. And we are done. The purpose of this class is pretty clear now, right? 
The last example is a pretty common one. In almost every unit test project, you find a mock helper. But let's look closer. This actually is a factory. It just creates a lot of mocks. So let's name it mock factory. The second reason why a helper exists is the classic got class, which just accumulated too much responsibilities. The solution here is clear as well. Fix the design. But this is a topic for another video. That's it for today. Follow those tips in your projects to improve the readability of your code. See you in the next video.